I've been meaning to get around to my capstone for the year 2021. It's been a long road getting here, but looking back, I realized just how front-loaded this year was, though there were certainly gems throughout, which is why I make these, to highlight exactly what stood out in a year to end it on a high note. Be that an AI's century-long journey through time to save humanity from her own kind, demonstrating the power of artistic expression in Vivi, the surreal world cinematically presented and caked thick in 90s nostalgia in Sunny Boy, or a modern take on a storybook-inspired fantasy in Osama Ranking. I do this as a reminder why I like anime. Because while it's fun to gawk at train wrecks, I ultimately watch this stuff because I enjoy it. Horimiya was a highlight from Winter, a slow building character-driven romance story effectively handling the opposites attract angle by thrusting two characters into one another's orbit with a chance meeting. But after spending some time together, realizing their connection runs deeper than friends as they support each other in ways they need it most. Dealing with loneliness and abandonment issues through a strong, healthy relationship as the two leads help each other be better people. And this is without mentioning the stellar supporting cast that resonates the series' romantic tones through different shades by growing through the drama their feelings impose on them. Why this works is it's not simply a romance story that's done well, but an incredibly tangible group of friends, realized through dreams, trauma, and motivations that move the plot forward towards an unclear goal, the same way life itself does. A confession, dating, marriage? These aren't the end of the series, but landmarks in the lives of the characters, letting the audience get to know them so much deeper than just in the story, as we understand who they would be as people. Truly an anime that wove introspective drama and slice of life well, and not just its plot, but even the animation. With metaphor-laden visuals, effective use of narrative and visual tension to wind the audience up, and an overall on-point cinematography to convey the plot visually, Isekai has an awful track record at this point, so when it was announced that Mushoku Tensei Isekai Itara Honkidasu was getting an adaptation, those in the know let out a cheer. One of the first in a long line of reincarnated in another world light novels made in the budding Isekai genre, this series established many of the tropes Isekai would become loathed for early on. Backed by a studio and crew who cared, however, this quickly went from what could have been a quaint throwback to a hold my beer sort of anime. Things other isekai take for granted, this firmly established, getting the audience invested in the character as he learns about his new world and overcomes his incredibly downright debilitating character flaws through the course of the story. Not just in a scene, but through entire arcs, as this isn't a power fantasy, but as the title states, a real second shot at life with a person deeply flawed, wanting to be better, trying, but still doubting himself. Rudius is the typical isekai protagonist, but handled properly, by his previous life experience not always helping him in his new world. In him coming to terms with who he could be and making up for his previous failures as a world-ending plot unravels around him, is given time and care that most other franchises couldn't be bothered to give. Featuring an atmospheric soundtrack hyping up the world with awe-inspiring scope, it delivers on. A striking visual style that packs in more character, and the gumption to go all out with Sakuga when the moment calls for it to further draw people into this world. It delivers on just about every aspect it could, and then some. A slightly controversial pick to be sure, but Wonder Egg Priority's initial 11 episodes offer a lot. A series budding with animation on par with cinematic releases, a storyline so dense you could get lost in it, and steeped in metaphor to give this an artistic edge other franchises couldn't quite muster. Each episode really does feel like a trip to the movies, as we follow a girl bullied at school mourning the death of her friend who took her own life, as she meets other girls in similar situations as they try to cope. That in itself makes this a compelling narrative into the psyche of those left behind as they work through their grief. Now, it does tend to lose that thread as the series goes on, if I'm honest, but the anime poses hard questions to the audience about the nature of grief, regret, suicide, and our own choices. Those are why I think this is worth a watch, as well as the incredibly likable cast that pushes out of the boundaries of cliches by introducing painful stereotypes to show why they are the way they are, and then subverting that expectation as they push against the audience's assumptions. The last episode ruins a lot of this, but if looked at the initial season run with an open ending, I think this is the right sort of food for thought audiences looking for deeper meaning could feast upon. Odd Taxi, Spring's Little Darling is a bizarre sort of series with an underground feel that has a roundabout story that may feel like it lost track of the plot. It hasn't, but it will feel like the series launches through tangent after tangent, 
From finding a dead body of a local idol in a river, to a kid winning the lottery, eventually a bank heist, and ultimately an odd fascination with a certain taxi. But that's the charm. A loose group of characters bound by degrees of separation deal with extraordinary circumstances. Random, seemingly unrelated events all play into one another that build into a crescendo of craziness, answering the questions the series had the audience asking throughout, while stashing one last rug pull to throw us for a loop at the end. This series was weird and dark, but packs strong character moments, comedy, suspense, and really pulls the viewers along for a roller coaster of emotions. This is all held together by a likable, unique, and diverse cast experiencing going through various highs and lows in their lives, really selling that this is a cross-section of society, told through a sketchbook art style that's initially simplistic and stylized to sell the often weird tone, with an anthropomorphic animal cast that seems kinda like a random choice, but is actually integral to the plot, art style included, which shows a level of planning most other animes couldn't muster, as this would have otherwise been an easily dismissible gimmick. A more straightforward series was Vivi Fluoride Eyes Song, and I didn't think I would say that leading into an anime employing time travel as a feature. A lot of entries I can point to how they were unique or special, but this was honestly just a well-executed sci-fi story using a fairly common premise, done to death by other sci-fi franchises. An AI-led rebellion that's going to destroy humanity being stopped by time travel is a cliché, but the message here is so much more impactful, showing how the lines between humanity and AI blend as the machines we invented cope with their own existence, asking what creativity even is, how anxiety festers even in something we wouldn't think of as alive, relating these incredibly common emotions to the audience through an existence that's never felt them before. The beats of the plot are ultimately meaningless in terms of accomplishing its goals, but they build the framework of experience for the protagonist that's integral to the climax, showing incredible writing by subverting the goal-oriented progression the series had initially portrayed. Visually, this really scores high marks, with cinematography that builds tension in scenes, allows the breathing room to be artistic, and still packs a hell of a punch when shifting to action. And this isn't even talking about the score that punctuates and resonates with the core message of the anime, as the main character is an idol android whose songs are both in-universe, but are about the struggles she's undergoing. This was one that was incredibly easy to get lost in. Trigger returned this year with Dina Zenon, another entry into the Gridman universe. Much like Vivi, this dripped at the familiar, being a mech show utilizing the Sentai formulas we know all too well. However, while the premise is standard, the way the series treats it is almost as a form of escapism for the characters, a way to avoid their social responsibilities, their pain, and even their actual lives. They seek freedom from the tedium, so when a giant robot and kaiju drop on their laps, some jump at the opportunity to play pretend for a while. It's ultimately an atmospheric look at coping with latent trauma and growing to accept it, as the cast isn't up front or even really talks about what's troubling them. We just see it, which takes a great deal of trust in the audience, but is the essence of visual storytelling. It's because the cast is so well-rounded, dealing with tangible anxieties everyone can relate to, that they're the real draw of this series, with the campy mech battles filling out a role akin to therapy, rather than a battle to save the world. Summer Zurumichio Nissan is a series I found myself revisiting mentally time and time again. Being about an adult transitioning from young to middle-aged, wallowing in the flood of woes plaguing millennials and Gen Z, the series exudes a comfortable depression, a depression I found myself familiar with, as joy is sucked out of the main cast's lives, leaving a hollow work-sleep cycle with copious amounts of alcohol and drugs to numb the pain. It sells this bitter pill by wrapping it in a dark, almost childish sense of humor, where that pain is turned into a sword swung as a weapon against society, for putting such lofty societal expectations on a generation's shoulders. A perfect balance between comedy that hits home, and a deep-cutting message that makes the audience reflect on their own situation. It's not often a series can really get the audience to understand what depression is actually like, while still giving them a reason to keep watching the series with the humor that builds off the negativity the anime cultivates. As a fan of dark comedy and finding myself so closely related to the source material, I loved it. Sunny Boy was a visual and emotional trip that takes the audience through more of an experience than an actual story, as a class of students finds themselves lost in a sea of independent worlds following their own rules with superpowers to help guide them the first thought is this is going to be an adventure series, but that's not the case. This one's reminiscent of so many nostalgic 90s anime, 
with an indecisive protagonist akin to Shinji from EVA, packed with the bizarre storytelling of Serial Experiments Lane, and a visual style close to the 90s adaptation of Boogie Pop. It feels like a series that's frozen in time. The arcs that play out are self-contained stories, but ultimately they're vehicles to tell us more about the cast, who they are and why they act the way they do, what exactly motivates them and pulls them towards adulthood, as the main group struggles to quit messing around with superpowers and the endless stream of worlds. They have to make the hard choice to return home and grow up, to move on with their lives and lost loves. And I will wholeheartedly admit that this story is confusing and not particularly engaging, the themes, visual, and execution make it worth a watch, due to just how much care was put into this project. A fascinating throwback piece of media. Bones' adaptation of Vanitas no Carte secured a spot as a top pick for me being a perfect storm of everything I enjoy in anime. An interesting storyline that's full of twists, compelling quirky characters that are more than meets the eye, action, humor, an interesting setting, a unique animation style, strong visual direction, and a musical identity swirls to create a truly outstanding piece of media. I've pretty much summed up why it's here with that, but with the next core continuing in 2022 and at the time this script is being written, airing currently, I find it's only carving out that identity more. I feel this series has something to appeal to everyone. From action fans, steampunk fans, fantasy fans, vampire fans, be shonen fans, be shoujo fans, mystery fans, and so much more. Certainly check this series out, because it's fun on multiple levels. Fall brought us Osama Ranking, a series packed with emotion and love from the studio in every aspect, using a striking visual style akin to a children's picture book to tell a story that's reminiscent of western fairy tales. It captures the audience's interest in the protagonist that's suffering from some severe drawbacks like no strength in being deaf, but striving to be the number one king. Also, he can prove himself to everyone how power, leadership, and charisma aren't so rigidly defined. It carries a heartwarming message about self-determination, the value of close friendships, and really what makes one fit to be a leader with the skills they've honed in their struggles for the top. The visuals only enhance this anime, with a disarming style that hints it may be for a younger audience. But it doesn't dance around harsher subject matters like graphic deaths, betrayal, and loss of humanity, making this a powerful yet charming anime that uses its presentation to ease the audience into its themes, without talking down to them. I really can't praise this enough, especially with how many risks it took. Eike Monogatari was a retelling of a particularly old Japanese tale about political drama, treachery, and the battle for the emperor's throne told through the perspective of a song passing down a legend. This was a pretty ambitious series, as it brought out an endless stream of characters that each play an integral role to the story at different points, while having their own arcs throughout. This added an epic scope through a journey spanning the entire lives of some of the cast, as they witnessed the financial, political, and literal downfall of their family from influencers to traders on the run. And while this was a visual tree with battle scenes depicted in incredibly artistic ways that demonstrate the absolute unnecessary waste of human life, the slow and subtle way in which the plot progresses with multiple steps that lead to the destruction of the prolific KK clan ultimately makes this a highly bingeable series that drags you into the next episode. In a year that was high in sci-fi and supernatural, it's nice to see something historic for a change. Anime in 2021 was certainly a treat, this year felt incredibly experimental, as it pushed the bounds of the animated medium, trying new distinct styles, and brought the visual panache that critics drool over, myself included. And while the second half of the year felt a little more hollow than the first, there were certainly still series that left a mark. It was another great year for the medium, and I look forward to what 2022 has to offer. But for now, hey, you've made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and do all the other YouTube stuff to help the channel grow. You can also join my Discord with a link down in the description, and if you really want to support me, you can head on over to my Patreon and pick up some extra perks. Thanks for watching.